Good morning, Calvary. You ready to worship this morning? Come on, stand to your feet. Second Corinthians says that through Jesus Christ we receive the victory. Come on, are you ready to receive victory this morning? Come on, put your hands together. You are the undefeated one. My life and my salvation When the wicked, my enemies and my foes Came upon me to eat in my flesh They stumbled and fell Hung up the tent Almighty Defender My victory Break through in my praise, break through when I live, glorify 
Bring all 
small, what a special thing to know that He's the one who has given us our freedom. We have no freedom apart from Him. We've been grafted into the vine. We're a part of His family. He invites us to the table this morning. So Jesus, we come. God, we want to live in your freedom. We come to you. God, we receive your freedom in every part of our lives. God, we thank you that you made a way for our freedom. You know, the word says that it was for the joy set before him that Jesus endured the suffering of the cross. And this morning, I think it's just so important for us to remember that that joy was us. That joy was you and me. Oh, there's no other reason why he came but so that we could have fellowship and communion with him, that he could make a way for us to freedom where there was no way, that he could bridge the gap between us and the Father. And Jesus, we set our, our eyes and our focus on you. We remember, God, the, the way that you made for us. And we're thankful this morning. You're the way maker. You're the way maker, not just for our salvation, but you're the way maker in every situation, God. You're the way maker when we don't have enough finances. You're the way maker when our children are far from you. You're the way maker, God, when our marriage is falling apart. You're the way maker in our workplace. You're the way maker. We thank you for making a way. Come on, just begin to worship in your own words this morning. Begin to lift up from your heart. Come on, go deep this morning. Go deep. Well 
church that God is honored when you can praise him in faith before you see the miracle when you can go ahead and lift your voice even though you don't see the answer to your prayer yet I believe that shows God so much honor I believe he takes so much pleasure in knowing that you have faith enough to believe him for a miracle even when you don't see how it can happen and I believe that there's levels of praise and when you begin to worship and raise the volume of your voice, that it takes you to another level. And when you begin to sing with all of your mind, sing in faith, even despite your current circumstance, oh, God sees that and he's, he smiles on you. So we're going to sing this again. And I want you to just worship from the depths of your heart. I want you to raise your voice. I want you to sing in faith for the situation, whatever you're walking through. 
someone, our God is a God of the impossible. There is nothing out of his reach. There is nothing too hard for him. And we've got to get a grip of that this morning. Begin to declare these names. Even if you don't believe it yet, begin by faith to declare it over the situation. Come on. They make it, hear it forever. All this fear, lie in the darkness. Thought by now they fall, but you have never failed me. Yet. Waiting for 
chains to come Knowing the battle's won But you have never failed me yet You've never failed And your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness
Yes, I will. I'll see you do it again. I'll see you do it again. And your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. Your declare that. Thank you, Jesus. You did the impossible, God. Come on, I believe he's doing it right now. He's working out some impossible situations. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. I believe it, God. Hallelujah. I'll see you do it again. You made a way. And come on, declare that. I believe it. Say it. Say it. I believe it. Come on, say it. I believe it. Come on, speak it by faith this morning. I believe you're going to do it, God. I trust that you will do it. I stand on your promise that you're going to do it. Hallelujah. The righteous are never forsaken. I believe it, Lord. Yes. I'll see you do it again. Again, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Honey, the, the Lord gave me a word and I need to share it. Just a minute ago, as I was standing, the Lord said, There's some of you that have come into this place. And there's been limits put on you. The enemy has put limits. And those limits are like chains. That like in, in, in a bondage of a, of a jail cell, you sit there. And it's things that you haven't put on yourself. But the enemy has tried to imprison you to keep you from doing the work that God has called you to do. And the Lord draw, draw, draw my attention to Acts 16, 25. And it says, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God, and the prisoners were listening to them. Verse 26, Suddenly there was a great earthquake that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. The Lord spoke to me, and said there's some chains that need to be loose today but it's going to have to happen through our praise it's going to have to happen through lifting our voice because lifting our voice lifts up the name of Jesus that's above all names yes. I just want to challenge you today put aside the hindrances put aside the limits and let God take control and let him loose those chains today Yet I don't hallelujah 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 this morning Let's do that right now. We're not going to worry about the time. I want to challenge you. The Spirit of God is challenging us.
to let him break chains. As your praise is, as your faith is, so be it today. Let your praise represent your faith. Let your praise represent your faith that God's going to release chains and shackles off of your life. If you need victory today, if you need breakthrough today, if you need deliverance today, I challenge you right now as they begin to lead us back into this, we're going to step back down. I want you to praise God like you haven't praised him in a long time. I want you to press in like you haven't pressed in a long time. I want you to do what we started last week and just wait on the Lord. Wait on God to do whatever God wants to do in your life today. Come on. I've seen him move the mountains and he's going to do it again. He's going to do it again right now. Hallelujah. If you need a miracle today, get it right now. Get it right now. I believe he's going to do it again. Do it, Lord.
sometimes feel something like a spirit of hindrance in the room. And that's why the Holy Spirit just put this song on my heart to sing. There's some walls built up. There's some people in here that are not responding that need to be responding to the Spirit of God. And it's a spirit of pride that's keeping you from responding to the altar this morning. And the Holy Spirit wants you to know that he's compelling you this morning. It's by his grace. It's by his loving kindness that all are drawn to repentance. And he's compelling you this morning. And you can stay where you're at. And you can receive right where you're at. Oh, but the altar is a symbol of surrender. And when you respond to the altar, when you respond to the compelling of the Spirit, when you let your walls down, oh, he can move in and do so much greater. So respond this morning. Come on, he's offering grace this morning. Open up your heart this morning. Come on, withhold nothing from him. There's no part of you that he doesn't already see. He sees it all. He sees it all. So what's the point in holding it back? Jesus, we surrender this morning. God, we don't want to just go through another agenda. We're at a point in time of our history, God, we need an awakening, we need a revival, we need a shift in your church, God, a shift in your sons and daughters, where we're compelled to the altar. Compel us, Father, compel us, Father. Get us outside of our comfort zones, Jesus. Break the spirit of comfort on us, God. Convenience, break the spirit of convenience, God. We want to respond to you. We want to be obedient to the spirit. Obedient to the spirit. Come on, you just need to wait on him. Just wait. Forgive us, God. Forgive us, God, for putting ourselves first. Forgive us, God, for thinking of our comforts, God. Forgive us, God, for withholding back from you the things which you already see. Oh, would you break free? Would you break free? Would you break free in this house this morning? Oh, we need you, Spirit of freedom.
Spirit of the Lord is in this room this morning. I just believe he spoke to me and told me to just move out of the way and let him do what he wants to do. He's been teaching us for three weeks or four weeks now to just wait on him, to come expecting, to come anticipating. And I just want to add under the unction of the Spirit to what Sarah said, if there is anyone in here today that you need the breakthrough that we've sung about, that you need the victory that we're declaring. It's gonna require something of you and it's gonna firstly require that you set aside your pride and that you say, Lord, I'm here and I surrender to you. I want it, but I want it bad enough to go after it. I want it, but I want it bad enough to pursue you for it. I want it, but I need you, God. I can't do it on my own. I can't, I can't find a way, a process of my own ability to accomplish it. But you, Father, you're working it out. You're taking care of it. It's going to require something of you today. It's going to require pressing in. It's going to require pressing through. It's going to be like the woman with the issue of blood. If you need it, you've got to touch the hem of his garment. You've got to press through the crowd. You've got to get through those places of, of distraction and discouragement. And you've got to come to a place of victory today. And it's at his feet. It's humbling yourself before him this morning. These altars are wide open, and he's beckoning you. If you need a victory today on any level in any area, I would even speak to those that are in here and there's sin in your life. Come and repent. Lay it at his feet. You need a miracle in your body. Come and give it to him today. Wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord this morning. Come on, press in today. They're going to sing again. Find a way to express your worship to him. Find a way to get beyond it. You can bow where you are. You can come to this altar. You can walk around. But there's this, the Spirit of the Lord is so thick and strong in this room right now. Don't leave here the way you walked in. Walk out of here transformed. Walk out of here renewed by the Spirit of the Lord. Come on, he's here right now. Receive. Come on, press in and receive all that he has for you. Spirit of God, break chains. Break chains. Break chains, Lord. Break chains, Lord. Break every chain, Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus, you change everything. Change Come on, there's miracles in this room. God has a miracle for you right now. He's not going to withhold it from you if you go after Him. Come on, pursue Him. Pursue Him. He won't withhold any good thing from His children. Lord, we declare your word. We declare your word. We declare your word. Jesus, 
Come on, declare this this morning. Sing it to the Lord. I need you. Just one more time. He's here right now. It's your prayer to him. only. Let's just sing it one more time. I need you. call the names of those that are part of our fellowship that need you this morning. They need a miracle touch from your hand. Lord, we call Gail Kelsley before you, Diane Williamson, Arnie Braden, Gary Castles, and Lord, others that need a touch from you. We just release them by faith right now into your hand for a miracle to touch their life today. A miracle of healing, a miracle of answers, a miracle of provision. Thank you, Jesus, for you are Jehovah Rapha, their health and their healer. And we believe today that they are made whole by faith in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Would you give, give God from your heart to his heart an offering of praise, hallelujah, an offering of worship, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for being in this place this morning, Lord. Thank you for being so present so real, so awesome in our lives, God. Have your way, Jesus, we pray. Lord, I pray that even in this moment, even in these next moments of this service, God, that if there's even one person, God, that you've been tugging at their heart, but they've yet to respond, they've yet to surrender, I pray, God, that they could not walk out of this building without being transformed and renewed in their spirit and in their heart today. Touch every heart, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, hallelujah. I love Jesus, amen. I'm thankful for his sweet presence that's in this room right now. Don't, get, don't, don't take this for granted. Don't just kind of slough this off and act like, well, that was good. No, this is, this is beautiful. This is, this is unlike, it. this is not normal. <laughs> it's not normal to just, we want it to be normal. He wants it to be normal. But we have to go after this. We have to learn how to wait on the Lord like this, how to linger and not feel like an agenda has to push us. Amen? Let the Spirit of the Lord speak to you and reveal himself to you today. Amen? Why don't you give him a praise offering from your heart? Come on, just one more time. Amen. Amen. If this is your first time or your first time in a long time at Calvary Assembly of God, we want to say welcome to the house of the Lord. Welcome to this church. We thank God for you. We're glad you're here. And we believe that God brought you here on purpose, with a purpose, for his glory and for your good. And so we want to say God bless you. And may God meet you today in a very special, special way. Would you give our guest a great big welcome this morning? Amen. Amen. If this is your first time, there's a card in the pew in front of you, and it says connect on it. We would love for you to fill that in. 
and for you to uh, give us as much information as you'd like for us to have. We just want to follow up and get to know you better, send you a letter, an email, a, a text message, whatever you would like. Just give us the information you'd like. And then before you leave today, turn that in to the desk just before you exit the building. And uh, we have a gift for you. For those that are here for the first time, we want to give you that gift. And it would be a real honor to be able to connect with you and get to know you better. Amen. Hey, there's a lot of things going on at Calvary. Amen. And we want you to be a part of them. If you would, just direct your attention to the screen and watch the announcement video with us. This is Brother Steve calling all men of Calvary on September the 28th. We're hosting our first annual pancake breakfast at 8 o'clock. Come out for some great food, great fun, great fellowship in the Fellowship Hall. Remember, September the 28th. Love to see you there. God bless. Exciting things are happening in Calvary Kids. Puppets are a great way to minister the Word of God, and we need you to join our puppet team that we're starting. You can sign up in the lobby today. See Mrs. Sunday or Mr. Bob for more details. Fall Festival 2019, it's coming up quick. We have three things going on. First, in the lobby, you will find a candy drop-off. For the next several weeks, you can bring candy so that we can give that candy out for the fall festival. The second thing is we have volunteer sign-ups starting today. We need your help. In the lobby, you'll find a sign-up sheet. Put your name down and we will get in contact with you. The third thing is that we have sign-ups for volunteer t-shirts. If you're planning on volunteering, please sign up to get a shirt. They're only $5. This event will be available for the next several weeks, so make sure sure you're a part of it. Amen. Make sure you're a part of it. Hallelujah. This is a, a wonderful opportunity to get plugged into an area that doesn't require you to, uh, to be here for early and late and like that. So our kids need you. And so if you, if you can be a part of the puppet ministry or helping kids church or our, any of these other areas of ministry that are available right now or sound room, other things need your help. Get plugged in, find a place to serve and serve for the glory of God. Amen. 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 It's time to give. It's time to give. Hallelujah. Amen. Brother Steve, do they have like 10 videos of you? Cause every week it's different. Man, you just went in there and you just, you wiped them out. You did an awesome job. Yeah, say it. Yeah. worth it. Push them. Push them. <laughs> Amen. It's, it's equal. It's equal to what we were saying earlier about our praise. It takes an investment. It's going to cost you something, but it will transform the health of the men of this church. And you've heard me say it a hundred times. As the spiritual health of our men go, so goes the health of this house. We want to raise up men of God, husbands of God, men of faith and obedience, men of valor, brothers, a brotherhood of men to help each other, encourage each other. So get here on the 28th, 8 a.m. I heard there's pancakes and maybe some bacon. I'm not sure. I don't want to put words and I don't want to, I don't want to increase the menu, but there's some good food. And you're going to want to be here and you're going to want to partake and receive all that God is doing. Amen. It's time to give. 
And the ushers are coming right now, right now, right now. They're coming, and we're going to pray in just a moment. Today is Mission Sunday, and uh, it is the day. It, it, you say, well, what's different about Mission Sunday and any other Sunday? It's the day we say that it's Mission Sunday. It's the day that we acknowledge that Calvary Assembly of God does more than just drop a few token pennies in an offering and say, here, use it to help meet the needs of this house. It is when we emphasize and take a moment in our service to say that what we do here doesn't stop here, but it goes around the world to reach unreached people, to touch those that don't have a church, a pulpit, an air conditioner, a pew to sit on. We want to send the message of Jesus Christ, the very power that just moved in these altars and touched lives, wants to move. God wants to move in the lives of people that have yet to receive a written word of God in their own language, have yet to receive a clear presentation of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we support somewhere between 30 and 40 missionaries, I think, right now on a monthly basis, and we do projects all over the world for missions. By the way, you gave over $2,000 last week for the victims of the Hurricane Dorian. Somebody ought to praise God for that. You gave that. And it is things like that that allows us to do more than what we can do right here in the four walls of this room. It is your giving. It is your faithfulness. And so today is Mission Sunday, and it's a time to remind you that many of you have made a commitment to missions, an annual or a monthly commitment to give something and uh, encourage you to remember that and to give today. Maybe you haven't made that commitment, but you can still give. Would you give something today in and above your tithe? The tithe belongs to God. We don't touch the tithe. Offerings for other needs that arise, that belongs to the needs that God sends us to help meet. But our missions pledge, our missions and faith promises go directly to reach souls around the globe. Thank you for your faithfulness, Calvary. Thank you for giving obediently. Thank you for giving sacrificially. I know that it's not always easy, but it's always worth it. Remember I read the story to you last week where... Abraham and the king of Sodom are d discussing and the king of Sodom says, here, you take, the, you take the goods and I'll take the people. And Abraham says this, no, I won't have any part of that. I've raised my hand to God. And I've said I won't have any alliance or allegiance to anyone but him. He's my provider. And he, he refused to have a business relationship or to receive his provision from anyone other than God. I submit to you this morning that if you withhold your tithe, if you withhold those things that are before you as a need from giving to those projects and those missions gifts, then we make an alliance that I can take care of myself. I'll take care of my money. I'll be a steward of my money in my own way. We want to do it God's way. Have no unholy alliance. Give God what belongs to him today. Trust him for the rest. Give him off the top the first 10%. And watch as he blesses every part of your life. Not just your finances, but your family, your future, your ministry, every part of your life. If you believe it, say amen. amen. Let's pray this morning. Father, thank you for the privilege we have to worship you. Thank you, Lord, for the opportunity we have to give to you. Thank you, God, for your holy word that teaches us to give without reservation. To give obediently and sacrificially knowing that your word declares that those who give will be met by the hand of God your word says you will draw others to give to us to lay back in our lap the blessings good measure pressed down shaken together and running over Lord I thank you for provision for every giver today I thank you for blessing on every gift today and I thank you Lord that the money that is given would meet the needs of this house and would go forth from here to the nations of the world to win souls till the whole world knows Jesus. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. Bless you as you give this morning. Let's sing it together. I need you, oh, I need you every hour. I need you. My heart is just 
Yes, oh God, how I need you. Sing it one more time. Come on, declare it to the Lord. Need you, oh, I need you. Give God a shout of praise. Amen. 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 If you love Jesus, say praise the Lord. Look at your neighbor and say, I love Jesus. Now look at your other neighbor and say, do you love Jesus? And now answer your neighbor that asked you the question. Amen. We're here because we love Jesus. Amen. I just want to release a, a word to you as briefly as I'm capable of. I'm not sure how briefly that is, but I'm going to try. But I, I have to tell you, I sat in four or two wonderful workshops. My wife did four workshops this week at the uh, conference we were at, breakout sessions, and she can be long-winded too. So she, she can look at me all day long and go, but I'm telling you, I sat there and she she. I'm just saying, just saying, amen. She keeps me on track. She helps me. And so I did what she does, did, does to me. I sat on the front row of her little breakout session, and when it started getting close to that time, I started going. She did. So that gave me permission to ignore it when she does it. Just kidding, she did very good. She, she, she acknowledged it even, and she stopped on time. That doesn't mean I'm going to. Hallelujah. I am. I'm going to try because I really feel in my spirit to put an exclamation point on the series that we've just come through by way of taking yet a few more minutes today at the conclusion of this message to wait on the Lord. I was so moved in my spirit last Sunday as people lingered in these altars. Some could not because of commitments. Others could not because of other reasons. But many just lingered and pressed it. If you received something from God in waiting on him last Sunday, would you just wave your hand at me? Just wave. If God just did something, just keep waving until everybody's doing it or until those that, yeah, all across this house. Thank you. You can put your hand. I, I want to just encourage you, and I, I've talked, Sister Donna and I have talked, others and I have talked. That, that has to become a culture that we create. Waiting on God isn't something we should do periodically or sporadically or when we're in the mood for it. It must be something that we as a church, Calvary Assembly of God, that we do regularly, that it becomes who we are, that we, that we don't, it, and it takes some intentionality. It takes some, some pre-thought before you come to church on Sunday because if you, and I'm not being critical here, don't misunderstand my comment, please, but if you put a roast in the oven with a timer and it's going to be done at a certain time, then you've already predetermined that you're only staying in this altar for a certain amount of time. If you, make it a, if you make an arrangement, and, and I'm not saying not to make plans. I, I have to sometimes. I get that. But if you make a plan to meet somebody for lunch at a certain time in a certain restaurant, you've already predetermined, then, Lord, you, you've got exactly this much time to meet me at the point of whatever you want to meet me at. Or, or, is anybody with me? Again, I don't want this to sound critical, but I just feel like as a church, as believers, as the body of Christ, I'm not just talking about Calvary, but in general, the body of Christ needs to turn our thoughts and our attentions back to God, back to his word, and back to a place where we can absolutely and completely open our hearts, our ears, our minds, our spirits to receive and to re hear whatever God is saying and longing to do in his house and in his church. And if we're going to do that, then we can't put a clock on God. We 
we cannot, if we want to hear from God, if we want to possess the very promises of his word and his blessings and accomplish the visions that he's put in your life, then we have to take time as not just individually, I trust that you do this personally, but corporately, we have to take time together as the body to press in, to press through, to hear from God and say, God, what do you want to do in us? I'm not talking about controlling your time, monopolizing your schedule and saying, look, you need to give God, you know, five, six, eight hours on Sunday in the house of the Lord. But if God wants it, he should be able to take it. I want to encourage us today to do whatever it takes to become intentional about waiting on the Lord. If you, if you wrote down some visions over the last week or two and you've been praying over those and if you have them today you might want to just hold on to them and even get ready to wait on the Lord again in just a few minutes with me on that I believe God is speaking and I want to just with an exclamation point on this series and I, I thought I was done last week and I really am done on the series but the exclamation point is this that it's time for us to possess the things that he's put in our hearts it's time to quit talking about it and quit thinking about it and quit discussing it and having councils on it and having little uh, uh, gatherings at your house or chit chats on the phone about, well, I think God's saying this or I think God's going to do that. Or maybe I wonder if God, what did God say to you? I think it's time to just start possessing it. I think it's time to claim the things that God is saying to you. I think it's time to rise up, men of faith, women of faith, and do something to go after the promise of God. I'm putting my feet to my faith. I, I, I printed this map of Orange Park. And I put the scripture on it, the reference scripture on it of Genesis 13, 17, where God tells Abraham or Abram, he says, he says, as far as you can see, look to the north, south, east, west, as far as you can see, he's talking about the land, he says, I'll give it to you. And I just, listen, God didn't call my family and I to Orange Park for us to, to stand on platforms and walk around on carpet and sit on padded pews and, and pat people on the back and say, God bless you. He called us here to possess the land. He called us here along with you, alongside of you, and you alongside of us for us to do something for the kingdom and for the glory of God. Is anybody in this house this morning? I need you to wake up. I know, I know it's a little rainy or overcast outside and people are tired and some of us were at conference all week or uh, a conference all week and, uh, and we're tired and you're tired. And, but I'm here to tell you something. It's going to require, and God's been saying it this morning already, that he's asking you and I to get out of our comfort zone and do something to possess the things that he's told you. I'm not going to let this go. If you think that I just, you know, we preached this little series and you wrote some stuff down and, well, I'm glad we're past that. Let's get on to something. I'm not going to let it go till God lets it go. God gave you something. God put something in your spirit. He spoke something over your family, over your marriage, over your finances, over your home, your business, your job, your church, your ministry, and it's time to possess what God has told you. God gives promises. He told Abram, Abram, he said, go walk through the land in every direction, for I am giving it to you. I want to challenge you. I believe God's given us Orange Park and Clay County. I believe God is giving Calvary, uh, Middleburg, and, and uh, I don't even know what our, what our borders are for Clay County. Does anybody know? Help me out with all the, all the borders. I know, I know Green Cove, and wh which way? We're already past that. But, but I, I know there's, there's plenty here that are not in Clay County, but I just, for the sake of this message, what are our borders? Somebody help me. I know we got Green Cove and, and pardon me, Keystone Heights the other way, and, and we got Middleburg and, uh, and Orange Park. And listen, I want you to know something, and, and beyond. We'll take every county around. I'm not, I'm not limiting God here, but I'm telling you, God planted us here. He put us here. He put this church on Nightbox and Blanding Boulevard with a purpose and for a purpose. And it's time for you and I together, together, everybody say together, to possess the land, to possess the promise. God gives promises. Hey, tell your neighbor, God gives promises. 
In 2 Peter, you don't, they're not going to throw these on the screen. I didn't give these scriptures to you, so don't, they won't be there. These, these are just some promises that I printed out. In 2 Peter 1, 4, And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Jeremiah 29, 11, how about this promise? For I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster to give you a future and to hope. I'm just giving you some promises that God gave us. Now, there's, there's hundreds more in the word of God. I just picked out a few. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 and 29 says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Isaiah 40, verses 29 through 31 says he gives power to the weak. Does anybody need power today? It says, and he gives strength to the powerless. Even youth will become, uh, will become weak and tired, and young men will fall in exhaustion. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. Hallelujah. Thank God for that promise. Does anybody need new strength today? Philippians 4.19 says, And this same God who takes care of me will supply all of my needs from his glorious riches. That's a promise. Here's a promise for you. Romans 8.37-39 through 39 says, No, despite all these things, overwhelming victory is ours through Christ who loved us. And I am convinced that nothing can ever separate us from God's love. Neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor demons, neither fear of for today or worry about tomorrow. Not even the power of hell can separate us from God's love. No power in the sky above or in the earth below. Indeed, nothing in all creation will ever be able to separate us from the love of God. God that is revealed in Christ Jesus our Lord. Somebody ought to give God praise. That's a wonderful promise from the word of the Lord. Proverbs 133 says, but all who listen to me will live in peace. Oh, thank God for his peace. His peace that passes all understanding. This is what I believe this morning, Calvary. I, I'm not here to to hype you up. I'm here to release something into your spirit today that it's time for you and I to begin to possess the things that God has told us are ours. It's time to take them. It's time to quit twiddling our thumbs or, or, or discussing matters. It's time to step into action. It's time to do even as he told Abram to do. And I understand that that was talking about uh, his provision for, for, the, for his seed and, and generations to come. But we're part of that as well. Come on, somebody. And God's promises still stand true. And I understand that he was talking about a geographical area far, far from here. But I still believe that the word, the promise of God can be for us he still speaks today and he's saying this wherever you go wherever you walk go and do it walk somewhere and claim it for the Lord I'm telling you this week on a couple of occasions I've I've pulled up here early I've taken my son to school and I've pulled up here early and I've I've gotten out of my car and before I walk into my office uh, I walked right out here to Blanding Boulevard and I just started praying in my heavenly language I just started praying in tongues and I I began to march around this gas station right out here on the corner that's dilapidated and run down and 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 closed up and weed over infested I'm telling you something I'm believing that belongs to the kingdom of God I'm believing that belongs to God's use and God's glory. Listen to me. It's not going to happen because we hope it. It's not going to happen because I said it from a pulpit. It's going to happen because we possess it. It's going to happen because we do something about it. It's going to happen because we put our feet faith into action and motion and begin to declare it and do something, whatever it is that God tells us to do to possess it. Promises, what are they? Think about that for a minute. What is a promise? What is a promise? Promises are seeds implanted in our inner man that give us hope. A promise is a seed implanted in your mind, in your heart, that give you hope. A promise, in a good sense, declares something good about what is going to happen. In a bad sense, it declares something bad is going to happen. 
there can be a promise. Somebody looks at you and says, I'm going to kill you. That's a bad promise. <laughs> That's not a good promise. You don't want to hold on to that. But in a good sense, when someone promises you something, that they're going to bless you or help you or do something to honor you, that's a good promise. We want that. We hold on to that. Promises are either written or spoken words that inform us of an intention toward us. I want to tell you something. God has a good intention toward you. Hallelujah. That ought to bless somebody today. Maybe the devil's been beating you up all week, kicking you in the head and in the side and telling you that you're no good and, and that everything is going bad and nothing's going to work out. But God has good intentions toward you. He's written it in his holy word. He's written promise after promise. You, you can write down. You can have those list of scriptures I read earlier if you want them. But listen, you need to write down the promises of God and just begin to declare God has good intention towards me. Hallelujah. So we understand promise. If you understand promise, just wave at me so I can move on. Thank you. And now everybody waved when I said that. So what is possessing? To possess is to have hold, to own, and to enjoy. I like that. Yes. To possess something is to take hold of, to own, and to enjoy. Mm. One, three, one, three. Blanding Boulevard. 1313 Blanding Boulevard is the address to the gas station on the corner. I believe it is God's will for Calvary to have hold, to own, and to enjoy it for the glory of God. Come on now. Hallelujah. I think I'm happier than y'all are about this. I'm only, I'm only using that as a, as a diving board. I'm only using that because, listen, I believe that's a corporate vision. I believe that's something God is saying to us. And that's just one thing. And it's, it's less important than the souls that he's called us to reach. It's less important. It is only a tool for us to use so we can reach those souls. But there are many things that you are holding on to individually. There are many things that you are grasping and grappling with in your own heart and mind that God has spoken to you maybe decades ago, maybe years ago, possibly last week or the last few weeks. And it's time for you to recognize and realize that if it's a word from God, then it is for you to take hold of, to possess, to enjoy, to own. Hallelujah. In Hebrew, this word possess means to be entrusted with something. Here's the thing. God doesn't just give you something to foolishly waste away, but if God's going to give you something, he's entrusting it with you. He's trusting you to take care of that that he gives you. God has given us this beautiful building. How many thank God for the buildings and the property and the resources of this, of this house? Amen. Thank God for that. He's given it to us. We must take care of it. We give in offerings to take care of it. We come and work. Many of you serve and volunteer hours throughout the week to come and minister and work right here and to help take care of this facility and all that is going on. It's a blessing that God has given us. He's entrusted it to us. The things you wrote down on that piece of paper two weeks ago and, and the things that God has given you that you've written in your journals over, over weeks or months or years, they have been given to you. And when he releases them to you, he is entrusting you to take care of them. And to do good by them for his glory. If God gives you something, you don't earn that. It's a gift. In the Greek, in 1 Thessalonians 4.4, 4, it speaks of how to possess uh, for ourselves sanctification and honor. And this word here, to possess, means to acquire, to get or procure a thing for oneself. In other words, there's some effort on your part and my part to possess whatever God's promised us. Hello. It's going to require something of you. And, and listen, I, the, nobody knew. Sarah didn't know. No one else that shared the scripture Beverly shared earlier. Nobody knew what I was saying, what going to talk about this morning. But God, from the beginning of the service, has been telling us that there's going to be something of us. It's going to require something. We've got to humble ourselves. We've got to be willing to go after him, to, to do whatever it takes to experience him. Somebody say it's time to possess the promise. Here's the facts. Everything we need was given to us through the cross of Calvary by the blood of Jesus. The sacrificial offering that Jesus made on the cross was the final price to be paid. You don't have to do anything in the sense of 
personal sacrifice. You don't have to burn something on an altar, but you got to be willing to die to your flesh. you got to be willing to die to your plans and surrender to his plans. You don't have to work to purchase something that's already been purchased. Are you with me? You don't have to do anything to receive the blessings of God, but you still have to do something. I know that sounds like an oxymoron. I know it sounds re- uh, 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 like, I'm, like I'm saying one thing and then saying something else, but I need you to catch this. You don't have to do anything, and it always seems like God's given us these promises, but we're holding on to a promise, like it hadn't happened yet. Is, are you with me? Maybe you need a healing in your body and you haven't received the manifestation of that yet. Maybe you need a financial miracle and you haven't seen that yet. Maybe your bills need to be paid, but you've asked God for provision, but you haven't received it yet. Maybe there's a relationship breakdown and you've asked God for a miracle, but there's not unity yet. Here's what I want you to know. God already paid the price. Now, you don't have to do anything to get it, but you have to obey him to receive it. It's available to you, but you've got to get outside of yourself and outside of your own plans and agendas and say, here I am, Lord. I submit willingly to you to walk in your ways. I want to possess the land. Listen, Abram had to do something. He had to walk. The Bible said, walk in the north, the south, the east, and the west, and I will give it to you. He, it was already his. God had given him the promise, but now he had to step out in faith to receive it. Second Peter 1.3 says this, His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. He has given us everything we need for life. Wow, that ought to bless somebody's socks off right there. You walked in here with a need. Anybody walk in here with any kind of need at all this morning? Wait, raise your hand. You already got a miracle. Come on. Joshua 21, 45 says this. Not one of all the Lord's good promises to Israel has ever failed. Everyone was fulfilled. Here's what I want to release by faith into your spirit right now. If he's never failed, and he's already said that I've given you everything you need for your life, then what makes you think he's ever going to fail? I need you to wrap your your head around this this morning. If you're going to walk out of here with victory, then you need to wrap your head around this whole thought that God is not going to fail you. (laughs) He's not going to leave you wanting. He's not going to leave you hanging. He's not going to leave you in some place of despair and distraction and being distraught for the rest of your days. Because you're there right now, I can only imagine that Abram was on this long journey. Abram and Lot and, and all of the family and all of the, the, the livestock, and they were on this long journey. And, I could, and they were pursuing something. They didn't even know where they were going in total. They, just, they were just trying to obey God, whatever God said. And, and, and they get to this point, and now they were fussing among themselves and arguing and they couldn't get along and Abram being the man of God that he was he says to Lot God says I'm going to give you this land right here where you are right now and he looks to Lot and he says you take your pick first that's trust (laughs) that's trust in God that God's got you God's going to take care of you he understood God had never failed he understood God was not going to fail he understood that God was going to give him exactly what he needed to do whatever God wanted him to do and so he could look at Lot and say you take the you take your pick first go after it receive it we need that kind of faith in the church today we try to put God, we line up all these things, we plan so much, we write it all down, and we say, now God, you got to do this in order for this to happen, and you got to do this in order for that to happen, and that's not what Abram does at all. He says, Lot, you take your pick, and then, and then after that, this is what the Lord says. He says, now, look to the north, as far as you can see. Look to the south, as far as you can see. Look to the east, as far as you can see. West, now, go walk. And wherever you walk, I will give it to you. I'll give it to you. 
If you wrote something down on that paper a couple of weeks ago, or if you've ever written anything down that God's told you, I'm going to tell you something. He's ready to give it to you. That's a simple word this morning. I have eight pages of notes, and I'm not even going to get there to them. I'm going to tell you something. God has already given it to you. Where's your faith this morning? I'm telling you something. It's time to wait on the Lord. 2 Corinthians 1.20 says, For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. How many promises has God given you? Maybe it's too many to, te- to tell. The Bible says, God has given them to you. They are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Somebody just needs to start saying amen to the yes that God's already given you. Amen means this, so be it. It's a period. It's, it's saying that's it. It's done. Amen. Somebody needs to say amen to the yes that God gave you. I'm wrapping this thing up and we're going to just, in fact, y'all can just come on to the instruments right now. I don't know, I don't know how Calvary was originally started. I don't know the vision. I don't know who, I don't know who launched this church. I don't know who planted it many, many years ago. I don't know what they saw. I don't know what their vision was for buildings or, or outreach or how they were planning on doing what. But God put a vision in somebody or several people's hearts to plant a church. And they did it. They did it faithfully. They did it obediently. I'm sure they did it sacrificially. And at some point in time, in some point in time in all of that, things went their own way. They got older. They got sick. They had to retire, whatever. And the fulfillment or the fruition of all that they had vision of and dreams of, I'm sure they did not see it totally as they had hoped to see it. Because usually we don't. But that does not limit the yes from God. Because of their faithfulness, we sit today in a beautiful sanctuary. Because of their yes to God, because of their obedience to God, we sit here with resources at our fingertips to do more than we've ever done for the glory of God in this community. Is anybody with me this morning? I know this isn't a shout me down kind of sermon, but I need you to catch something in your spirit today because I'm not willing to walk out of this room. I'm not willing to leave this house today and just go through another week of administrative duties and your, your family issues and my family issues and just say, well, we'll meet back here again next Sunday. I want to go out of here with a fresh vision from heaven. I want to go out of here with something stirring on the inside of me and on the inside of you that says, Pastor, or God, better yet, God, we're willing to do whatever you need us to do. We're willing to sacrifice whatever you need us to sacrifice we're willing to go out of our way to tell someone about Jesus to invite someone back to this house next Sunday to have make sure that these altars are full to make sure we're meeting people's needs right where they are I want you to know something Orange Park belongs to Jesus and Calvary is one of the tools that Jesus is going to use to reach Orange Park he said it to me as clear as I'm sitting here as I was sitting in my living room in my recliner and my wife in her recliner we, we must be old when we're sitting in recliners talking to each other and we're sitting there looking at each other and at the same time we had the same scripture come to our hearts and come to and we weren't even talking about the issue we weren't dealing with this and she started telling me about a scripture she was reading and I said that is so weird I'm looking it up right now on Google I'm looking that verse up right now I need you to know something Calvary God doesn't do things by coincidence he does stuff by his sovereign plan and I'm telling you I immediately started printing this map right here. I went online. I found a place to print it and I put that scripture on it and I want you to know something. Orange Park belongs to Jesus. Orange Park belongs to Jesus. 
And Calvary Assembly of God is going to have a part to play in making sure that every soul is saved, that every hungry person is fed, that every need is met, that every heart is filled with the glory, the grace, and the power of God. And if you want to be a part of it, if you want your vision to connect with the vision God is giving to this house, I want you to stand to your feet with me and get to this altar and stand with me as we pray over this map together today. Come on, if you want your vision, your dreams, to connect with the vision and dream that God is giving this house, then I'm asking you to join me, your pastor, right here. Come here, honey, right here. I'm asking you to join me. Jesus. Jesus. If you want your vision and your dream, the things God's spoken to you over time, Come on, there's, there's nothing, step in as close as you can. I'm telling you, you won't get struck by lightning if you come to the altar. I wonder sometimes why people just linger and sit back in the back and don't come to, there, there's not, good things happen in the altar. You ought to want to be here. Come on. We're going to do two things this morning. Two things are getting ready to happen right now. We're going to come in agreement together for our city. We're going to believe souls. We're going to believe for revival. We're going to believe for an outpouring of the Spirit of God like we've never known before. And then I'm going to challenge you after we're done praying that prayer. In fact, somebody grab me the portable mic, the cordless mic, please. It's probably on the front row. Sister Donna, I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you to pray over our city. And pray that prayer that God will give us this city. Will you do that? And after we've done that, after we've prayed this prayer together, I'm going to ask you to linger as long as the Holy Spirit will allow you, as long as your schedule will allow you to find a place. It can be in a pew. It can be at this altar. And I want you just to start pouring your heart out to God and ask him to bring those dreams and those visions he's given you for your life. Just start bringing them to pass. Start showing you how to possess them. Start showing you how to take hold by faith and accomplish them. And I'm going to tell you something. What God's going to do is he's going to align the things he's spoken to you over years now, in some cases. He's going to show you how to align those things with the vision he's giving to this house. It's just going to line up. You're going to go, wow, I never saw that. I believe that with all my heart this morning. Will you take the hand of your neighbor right next to you right now? Come on, just take the hand of your neighbor. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Father, we just come before you and we just bring Clay County. We bring our county before you this morning, Lord God. We stand in the gap. We stand in the gap, Father God, for all the souls in this community, Father God. Around this church is our sphere of influence, Father God. We live in this county. And Father, we just bring these families before you this morning, Lord. We know that you are the deliverer, Lord Jesus. We ask for souls. We Give ask soul. for souls, Give Lord God. Soul. We ask for souls in every home. We ask for families. We ask for household salvations in this community, Father God. We pray, Father, your light would shine into their hearts, Lord God, and bring them to Jesus. We pray, Lord, for those that are abused, for those that, Lord God, are addicted, for those that don't know you, for those that are bound, Lord God, for those that are deceived that don't yet know you. We We ask for their souls this morning, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, you would shine your light, Lord. Lord. Shine your light in this community, Lord God. And let Calvary, Assembly of God, be the place, Lord God, where your fire is seen over this building, Lord God. Even when they drive down Blanding, even when they drive down Nightbox, let them see. Let them see the fire of God on top of this house, Lord God. God. Let them see your holy fire, Lord God. Draw them. Draw them by your spirit into your kingdom, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, they would know this is a safe place, Lord God. This this is a place of love. That they will find your love in this body, Lord God. So help us to love them, Lord God, the way you love them. Help us to see them the way you see them, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, break our hearts for the people in this community, Lord God. Break our hearts over these situations, Lord God. We pray there is families hanging in the balance, Lord God. There's children hanging in the balance, Lord God. 
And so we thank you, Father. Go into those the crack houses. Go into yes, those drug Lord. places, yes, Lord, Lord God. And set them free, Jesus. Lord Jesus. Set the captives free, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray. We pray. Make us hungry. Make hungry. us hungry, Lord God, hungry. for the things of the kingdom of God. Oh, Lord Jesus, let Calvary be the light on this hill. Let us be the light that you've called us to be in this community, Lord God. Oh, Lord Jesus, we pray. We give you praise, praise for every you, family, for every soul coming praise into this you, house, yes, Father Lord. God. Oh, Lord Jesus, let us, yes, be in agreement Alleluia. in this thing, Father God, Alleluia. that you're going to do the impossible, Alleluia. Lord God. Yes, you're still Lord the George. miracle maker. Yes, you you're are, still Lord. the yes, miracle are, maker, Lord. Lord Jesus. And so we thank you, Lord God, this place will be a sign and a wonder. And Lord, we bring to your remembrance the prophecies that's been prophesied over this house, that they would be standing outside in line in wheelchairs to get in this house, Father God. And so we bring that prophecy before for Hallelujah. you this morning, yes, Father God. God and we thank you. This is a healing shout place, a healing place where your spirit we is poured that, out. Lord. And so we thank yes, you for that promise this morning, it. Lord God. We declare it to be yes. so in Jesus' Hallelujah. precious name. And all Hallelujah. the saints of God said, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 That's it. Give him praise for it. Believe for it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, as they begin to worship, will you take time this morning, however much time you want, be it a minute or be it 30 minutes, I don't care. And would you find a way just to get alone with God, find a place at this altar, and just begin to just call unto the Lord and wait and tarry in His presence and let Him download and speak something into your spirit this morning. Come on, the Spirit of the Lord is here. There's freedom. There's anointing. He's here right now. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, arranging destinies. I worship you. I worship you. You are here, turning lines around. I worship
So